There are a lot of individual tutorial videos out there on the internet, but there aren't any real drills that you can practice. There's not like a rundown of a handful of things that can help you become a better trials rider, or even ones that are gonna show you what order to learn things in, unless you've already checked out stuff on this channel. So today what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you five easy bike trials drills to practice. And these aren't necessarily learn this trick, then learn this trick. These are five different drills that you're gonna do that are gonna set you up to get better bike handling, better wheel placement, better brake and pedal control. I'm gonna take you through these five and we're gonna get you in a really good place after you practice all of these drills. Now the best part about it is the only thing you really need is a bike, which you can use as a trials bike, but you can also do these on a mountain bike or really any bike for that matter. And all you need other than that is maybe a little bit of duct tape and something like a piece of wood. You could also replace this piece of wood with a pallet or a curb if you don't have this, but really the goal here is to make this something that you can practice basically anywhere. You can do these drills on a ride, you can do these drills in your garage, you can do them basically anywhere and it's gonna set you up for just leveling up your bike trials riding. Before we dive much deeper into this whole thing, I wanna set expectations because the tricks we're gonna be talking about doing on these drills, sometimes they take a little bit of time just to get the movement itself before you can even start doing the drill. Now the good thing is on this channel, everything I'm about to go through has an individual video explaining how to do it. And in the description below, I'm gonna put every single one of the individual trick tips. And so you'll be able to go back and forth and pick up this one and then come back and do the drill for it. So understand that you're not gonna be able to do all five of these right out of the gate. I'm gonna start really mellow and we'll build up from there, but just know that maybe you won't be able to do all five of these right out of the gate and that's okay. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but this is like the vegetables that are gonna make you a good trials rider, you know? This is the stuff that you have to practice so that it makes it easier to learn the more advanced moves. So I'm really giving you these drills as something that you can add in once you've got some of the basics down to help improve your riding, to help improve your confidence, and to have something really strong to build on top of. Now, just like I said, there are all kinds of individual trick tutorials on this channel, and there's even the first five series, which helps you figure out which order to learn tricks. This video is all about drills that are gonna make you more confident as a trials rider. And I always say practice makes progress. And that's exactly what we're after today. I'm not necessarily teaching you tricks to do. I'm showing you the different things you can do to kind of force progression and force confidence in your riding so that when you're out riding, it's easier to learn these tricks. It's easier to progress. And this is really the foundation that we have to start with as trials riders, getting our balance points, getting our wheel placement, and really focusing in on those techniques. We're gonna start off real mellow with this first one. It's gonna be about balance points over the front and back wheel. Now what you're gonna do is basically roll slow, grab a little bit of front brake and do an endo where you lift the back wheel up off the ground. You get your body over that front wheel and you start experimenting with that balance point over the front wheel. This isn't necessarily that you're gonna start front hopping anytime soon, but getting that balance point over the front wheel is gonna make pivots easier. It's gonna make riding down steep things easier. It's gonna open up a lot of doors for you to be confident and comfortable on the front wheel. As your back wheel comes back down from that endo, you're gonna lift up on the front wheel and go into a balance point on the back wheel. And then once you start losing your balance there, put your front wheel down and continue riding. Do this 10 times over. Start feeling that front wheel balance point and back wheel balance point and get confident doing that. If you need to add some sets into it, if you start feeling like you're getting it, just feel free to just rip laps on this one. This next drill is all about wheel placement and this is where the duct tape comes in handy. We're gonna make an X on the floor. Now what you're gonna do to start, we're gonna have three different sets of drills for this X. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna straddle one of the lines in the X with a wheel on either side and we're gonna rock ourselves from one end of the line to the other, just back and forth, slowly moving your front tire and back tire, just tiny pivots to go all the way from one end to the other. Once you've got that dialed, come to the center of the X. Now we're gonna work on our front wheel placement. And what you're gonna do is pretty much lock the back wheel in place, and you're gonna lift your front wheel from one side of the X to the other, just back and forth, left and right. What this is doing is actually helping you balance in place so that when you wanna keep your back tire rooted somewhere, you can just move your front wheel to stay balanced. This is kind of an alternative to track stand. 
The third drill we're gonna do here, we're gonna do the same thing, but with our back wheel. We're gonna move our back wheel from one side of the X to the other, just back and forth. So you get that really confident feeling. And as you're watching this unfold, you're actually understanding where that wheel placement is, especially with that back wheel. There's almost nothing more important than knowing where your back wheel is when you're riding trials. And this is a really important thing to kind of wire that into your brain. This third drill actually builds off of that. And I call this one clocks. So you don't necessarily need the X on the ground for this one, but it kind of helps. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a front wheel one and then we're gonna do a back wheel one. So for the front wheel one, you lock your back wheel in place and you move your front wheel around like a clock. You can go counterclockwise or clockwise. I recommend learning both. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna slowly move your front wheel just a little bit to the right and a little bit more until you go all the way around in a circle. And then you turn around and go the opposite way around. Once you get confident moving your front wheel around, you do the exact same thing, but moving your back tire around. This one's a little bit harder, but this is helping you a lot with your pivots when it comes to being able to move and turn around in really tight spaces. It's also good if you're a mountain biker for switchbacks. This is like the most perfect thing that you can practice. We're gonna take things up just a notch for this next one. This is where things start getting a little bit more advanced. And what we're gonna be working on is our pedal and brake connection. This is the big unlock for trials riding though. Being able to pedal kick is what takes you from being able to jump up something that's maybe a foot to being able to jump a couple feet at a time. You can do side hops, you can do pedal kicks, you can do all kinds of things once you have your brake and pedal connection locked in. And essentially what I mean is pushing on the pedals and letting go of the brakes and knowing how to do that timing. Once you've got that wired in your brain, everything else becomes a lot easier to learn. So that's where we're gonna start here with this drill. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come either sideways up against it or we're gonna come about a 45 degree angle on and we're gonna use our pedal kick to basically put our back wheel where our front wheel was. And if you wanna have an obstacle to do it up onto, that's great, but you should try it on flat ground first. This is really just timing of the pedal kick. And I, we talk about the pedal kick in an individual video that I made. And really the one step that really people struggle with is just getting that first movement of when they let go of their brakes and when they kick their pedals. And that's what this drill is meant to do. You wanna be able to consistently put your back wheel where your front wheel was by doing this movement. Now, if you do the side whip version, you've got a little bit of a pull and a little bit of a rotation to do it. If you do the surge, it's just a straight jump forward. But the movement that's making this whole thing happen should be your pedals moving instead of you just throwing the bike out in front of you. And it will feel very obvious. It should be easy to use the pedal kicks to move. It should be hard to lift the bike and push it into place. So if it feels easy, you're doing it right. If it feels hard, you're doing it wrong. This drill, I'm gonna lay out a handful of different ways that you can approach the drill and go through them and see which one works best for you. Some people have developed skills that, you know, maybe they can bunny hop higher than they can pedal kick or they can wheelie better than they can do this. So listen through all of these and decide which one is the easiest one for you to start on. The entire thing is really about pedal timing and takeoffs. So start with that, start with what you're confident in, but then try to do the rest of the stuff I'm talking about as well. So when you're riding up onto something, whether really you're using any technique to get up and onto it, you have to time out when you're gonna initiate that move based off of how tall it is or where it is in conjunction to you and your bike. So we're gonna work on four different techniques. And this is again, where we can use this piece of wood Again, you can actually use this on the ground, but I feel like the wood is helpful in that it gives you kind of a positive feeling of like I landed on something as opposed to on the ground. Sometimes you don't know where your back wheel is maybe landing or if you actually cleared the thing that you're trying to clear. So, you know, people can use sticks, they can use pallets, they can use this small piece of wood, but there's really four ways that we're gonna talk about to start practicing this. And the first is just gonna be a simple up and over where you're gonna roll at this piece of wood, you're gonna lift your front wheel over it, you're gonna lift your back wheel over it. Just really simple and basic, but it's really more about the timing of thinking about when you need to initiate these movements as you come at something. So the wheelbase of your bike is gonna make a difference to this, the speed that you're rolling at, the obstacles make a difference to this, and really you wanna kinda lock that in your head. If I'm going this fast, I need to lift up this early. If I'm going this slow, I need to lift up a little bit later. So you're thinking through all that stuff. That's the first version of the drill that we wanna do.
Now the next one we want to do, we want to come up real close to it and we want to use that pedal kick to lift the front wheel up and onto it and then continue riding on. After that, we're going to try a bunny hop. This is just working out your bunny hop timing. So you're going to bunny hop and land your front wheel onto the obstacle that you've put in front of you, whether it's the piece of wood or the pallet or whatever. You can continue to build on that by wheeling onto the obstacle. So do a little bit of a wheelie with a hop. That's going to help kind of, again, get that timing worked out. We're just working through this timing of all the different ways that we can ride up onto something and using this small feature as a way to work out the timing. So much of the confidence that you're gonna get in these movements is more about timing than it is actual technique. If you don't have the timing right, the technique doesn't matter. So we wanna think about the timing of the different ways that we approach obstacles and when we lift our front wheel up, when we initiate the movements. That's really what this drill is all about. The last version of this, once you've got pedal kicks down, you can also do a pedal kick version of this movement. And again, it's just a matter of getting confident in this movement and doing a pedal kick from the ground up and onto this one small feature. If you're struggling with any of the drills here, I guess I just wanna say you're not alone. There's a lot of people out there that are trying to get these things locked in. And that's exactly why I'm gonna have links in the description below to each one of these movements. There's a tutorial that dives really deep into all the things that we talked about today. These drills are meant to help you progress, but you're not gonna get them first try. And so just have them in mind, have them something that you're working towards. Maybe you get the first two of the five drills and you're working towards learning the skills that go into the drills three, four, and five. But really, if you can master these five drills and do them on a regular basis, the baseline of your trials riding is just gonna come up and it's gonna make it so much easier to continue progressing quickly as a trials rider. I'm gonna put all of the trials tutorials in a playlist right here, and I'll also put all of the beginner trials tutorials organized in a playlist right here. This is probably a great one to start with. It'll help you with all the stuff we just talked about today.